have come. We have come into His house to call upon His name and worship Him. Hallelujah. Forget about yourself for a little while. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So Oh, 
Hallelujah. Come on and lift up a praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad that I bowed my knee here so I'll know him when we get over there. How, how about you this morning? Amen. I said, how about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of all that he's done for me, because I know he's Lord, I want to live my life for him. Anybody want to live your life for Jesus? Anybody actively living your life for Jesus? Can you just lift up your hand and say, yeah, I'm living my life for him because of all that he's done for me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is my desire. song all I have within me all I have within me
our Savior. Hallelujah.
I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. One more time, we glorify the Lord. is here. He's walking the aisles this morning. Glorify your name. Glorify. Gonna give him my best praise. Your name. We glorify Glorify. your name. We love you, Jesus. We glorify. you just lift up that heavenly language to Jesus today. 
with me this morning. Thank you for helping me to commune with God this morning. Hallelujah. That's what I feel like we, we just had communion. Communion with Jesus. Hallelujah. I just wanted to keep hitting that repeat button. <laughs> 
When I get a song I really like at home, I just hit the repeat button, and it just keeps playing it over and over and over again. Hallelujah. What a presence of God is in this house today. Oh, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. Whew, thank you, worship team. Thank you, church, for already being ready to worship this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God, it makes a difference. Let's honor our country this morning. We'll wait for the flag to come up. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we want to thank you so much for your giving, uh, not just of your offerings, but your time. I'd like to ask you to really pray our convalescent homes, we've had to um, not be able to go in and do meetings there, and they're putting lots of requirements and stipulations on. If you could just pray that they will remove them so that we can get back in there and visit with those wonderful people. And um, it's hard to live in loneliness, isn't it? And so uh, those meetings are, are everything. Uh, so please remember them in your prayers. Please remember our dear friend, Sister Emily Davies. Her brother passed away this past week. Pray for them for safe travels tomorrow and uh, also for the funeral, that God will be there. I uh, want to thank this church for all of your prayers for the families this week and I know Sister Emily will feel the same surrounding her. Your prayers were awesome. Um, just brought so much comfort, so much strength, and so many victories. Hallelujah. Sister Cynthia ran to me after Mama's funeral and just wrapped her arms around me in her little screamy voice she has, so excited, and said, Pastor, the walls have come down. And uh, that's powerful, isn't it? It's powerful. And so we're grateful to God, grateful to a church that uh, just stands with you. I know I certainly felt your prayers. Um, it just, uh, I'm trying not to look over there this morning. And um, I really missed my I love you today. But she, God was gracious and just kind of showed us the peace of heaven today for the heaviness of our hearts in losing those that we love. He's an awesome God, isn't he? And we can't, like Cynthia said this morning, we, we can't be sad because she is in a heavenly place. Marie's daddy's in a heavenly place, hallelujah. We just have to wait a little longer before we get there, hallelujah. So I know we're heavy hearted, but um, God is good. They've made it home. Devil has no more effect on them. They are overcomers. Hallelujah. So thank you for your prayers. And again, thank you for your giving. If you'd like to give financially this morning to help the church, those of you here, we have the kiosks. You're welcome to put your tithes and offerings in there, your mission offerings. And uh, you can also do it online. You can go to the church, push give. You can go to Easy Tithe, follow the prompts. If you're uh, watching us from home, um, please be a part of this work of God. We have a lot of things to do, and we all know it takes money to do it, don't we? It, the Bible says money answereth all things, and it does. And it's nice when that need arises to know it's there and it's just waiting to be used for somebody's life. So thank you for your giving this morning. I personally cannot wait to get into the Word this morning, so they're going to come and sing and usher us into the Word of God this morning. Get your Bibles out. Be ready. I'm going to make you work this morning. 
going to preach a little bit, and then we're all going to work at my message today. Got so excited when God dropped that into my spirit last night, and we're going to carry it on through this whole week in our homework. Yes, I put you back in school today. Hallelujah, and I'm going to give you all homework. Hallelujah. You all ready, guys? Hallelujah. Let's say howdy to Nick. He's back. <laughs> I'm back. <clears throat> Praise the Lord this morning. I've, uh, I've grown up in church my whole life. And like many of you, um, I've seen and heard of so many miracles that God has done, right? Many from your personal testimonies. And not only in this church, but the church more broadly, globally, we've personally seen and heard of all the miracles that God has done. And this particular song is a testimony that the God that we read about in the Bible is still the same God, still the same miracle, wonder-working God that we serve today, amen? He's still saving people. He's still healing people. He's still delivering people. He's still resurrecting the dead. Our God is still working, amen? Hallelujah. Let your faith be strengthened today as we sing this song. And I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness. Now I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. And there is beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Oh, I believe you're the wonder-working God. You're the wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God, and you heal because you love. Oh, the miracles we'll see, you're too good to not believe. And I can resurrect a man with my own hands. But just the mention of your name can raise the dead. So let us glory to the only one who can. Jesus, it's you. Oh, yes, Jesus, it's you. Oh, I believe you're the one new working God. You're the one new working God. All the too good to not believe you're the one who working God and you heal because you love all the miracles we'll see you're too good to not believe you're the one who working God you're the one who working God all the miracles I've seen you're too good to not I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bodies healed. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me he can do it. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts find me free. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me. I've seen cancer. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bodies healed. 
Hallelujah, after everything I've seen, you're too good to not believe. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise him this morning. Praise him this morning. If you need a healing, praise him this morning. Hallelujah. If you need an impossible situation resolved, praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, in advance, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
to not believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can stand and worship him, sit, whatever you want to do. Those of you who are still with us this morning, <laughs> turn to Matthew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. going to preach this morning, put a twist on a familiar, talked about all the time message. When I read it last night in this just dropped into my spirit. I was like, okay, Lord, where am I going to get this one from? But as I begin to look into it, I just began to get excited. So say to yourself this morning, let's believe that God can do it. I'm going to challenge you today. I'm going to caution you because I don't, I, this message is in no way meant by how we're going to get to where we're going to get to that you are a sinner. But I'm going to make a statement about something in these verses of Scripture. And if you're not careful, the enemy is going to do what I'm going to tell you he's not allowed to do. He's going to try to get you off course this morning. And... I want you to stay with me, okay? And I want you to understand the statement that I'm going to make. I went back and forth and said, God, whoa, that's pretty strong. But he didn't let me away with it. So um, I'm going to explain it, and then we're going to go into, I know that God can do it. <laughs> Are you ready? Hold your Bibles up. If it's on your phone, hold it up. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning as we raise your word, we ask you that you will talk to us, for I know that you have, you're in the process, and you are going to, to fulfill the promise of your people. It's what you intended for us. So as we open up your word today and we begin to read your word today, I ask you to write it on the tables of our heart, not in point 12, but in point 30. Make it stand out. Make it come alive. Let it be there that nothing else that tries to seep in will be able to take the word of truth out of our lives. We claim it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 4 says, When he was come down from the mountain great, Multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded. 
for a testimony unto them. How many here have read this story? How many here have heard this preached before? I know I've always asked you to turn that light down, but is there anyone up there in that booth that can just give me a little bit more light? I don't know, for some reason I have a shadow on my Bible this morning. This is where I want you to be careful that I don't lose you. Leprosy is a picture of sin. It's a picture of sin. I'm very, very careful here because a lot of people got into this thing of, oh my goodness, I'm sick, I've sinned, okay? Sometimes we get sick because we forgot to check the date on our deli meat, okay? (laughs) Sometimes we get sick because we don't eat our vegetables and we just fill up on McDonald's Big Macs. Okay, our bodies have to be taken care of, all right? So I could get criticized today, but hey, uh, might as well give him something, right? Um, I I don't believe that our sickness is sin. It's a part of sin, but it doesn't mean that if you get sick, you have sinned. Without sin, without the tree of knowledge, we would have never known what sickness was. Okay? So, uh, but we're going to use leprosy this morning as a picture of what sin is. I would be more concerned about sin being allowed to attack my life through my mind. I have to overcome sin. I am saved by grace, but I do not have to sin every day to keep grace in my life. Grace keeps sin out of my life. Okay? It's there, it's new every morning, it will hold me. I don't wake up in the morning saying, oh, what will I do today to keep grace in my life? I do wake up saying, oh, what will I do today to keep grace in my life? I will praise the Lord, I'll walk in his ways, I'll follow him, but I'm not going to go get me a drink. Okay? I have to, he stopped doing it now, but people would come up to our table and say, can I get you a drink? And my husband would say, we don't drink. And I'm like, honey, we do drink. We just don't drink screwdrivers. You'll have to forgive me, but, you know, when we were kids, I remember the first time I seen screwdriver on the drink menu. And it was at Mr. Steak here in Manchester. Yeah, Mr. Steak. And they, they sat us down, they gave us a menu, and we were going through it, and I seen screwdriver. And I cracked up, I've never forgot, I have no idea what is in it, don't care, won't ever buy one. I do use a screwdriver, but I won't drink one. <laughs> I'm kept in his peace because of that grace. And it's what saved me. But leprosy, the reason that it's a good example of sin is because it defiles, it spreads, and it destroys a person's life. Okay? So we're going to use this form this morning for where God wants 
to take you and I, and I am preaching this to me as much as I am to you, because if there's anything in this world that I want fulfilled in my life today, it is what I'm going to preach to you. So I can honestly say today, you can come on board with me if you want, but I'm going to preach this message. I'm going to put it in this house of God, and I hope you follow along with me because it's what I want God to do for me. Okay? How many knows that in the Word of God and... Um, I seen it in India in this day that we live was a part of seeing the lepers come gathered together helping each other and yelling defile defile It's a very sad sight and In our Christian walk, if we're not careful, we will have a leprosy of emotions. A leprosy of defeats. A leprosy of not good enoughs. A leprosy of insecurities. A leprosy of, I know he loves me, but I'm not good enough, leprosy. This is how I want to talk to you today about leprosy, and I just want to talk to you. Can't promise I won't get loud a few times, but I want to talk to you about it. Sin is something that destroys us, Sin is something that takes away the plan of God. It causes us many times to do things in our lives that we wish we didn't have to do, but we find ourselves falling to it. We find ourselves being weak in it. I wish that I could stop this, but it doesn't seem like I can. Anyone ever been there, done that? It's just an awful place to be. So let's take a work, look at this world word defiles. It means sully, mar, or spoil. Similar words to this word defiles is spoil, impair, degrade, pollute, poison, corrupt, Taint, dirty, stain, ruin, destroy. Now, as your pastor, I see so much potential in many of you. In the last little while, I have seen an Agnes Dillon. Sorry, I didn't ask her for permission, but she's talked about it. We've used her. You okay with me using you today, Agnes? Good. Sorry to put you on the spot. You could have said no, but... I watched Agnes a few years ago when God began to call her into a new level of her Christianity. And in that process, she said to me, Pastor, can you send someone? These people would like someone to come. And my response was to her, you go. Oh, but Pastor, I can't go. I'm not a minister. There were a few discussions that went back and forth online. And Sister Agnes 
decided I'll be the one pastor sends. From there, God began to open doors to her. God began to minister through her. God began to talk to her. I noticed that the emails begin to change. <laughs> Hallelujah. The emails change to pastor. I'm in this situation and I'm ready to go. Am I do you feel that I'm in the right direction? And sometimes I'd give her a little wisdom. Sometimes I'd say, Sister, I think you're right on. Is that true, Sister Agnes? Yes. And for a while, I would get an email in between these victories of God bringing her into a different place with something that would try to come in and bring up the past and poison and corrupt what God was doing in her life. Is she perfect? Wish She wishes she could say yes, just like you do too in me. Does she sometimes get up on the wrong side of the bed? I would imagine. The past will try to arise in our lives. It can come at really, really, really early ages. Things that happen to us, things that come our way, things that hurt us, things that we don't understand, things that can plague us. And the enemy of the mind works like this. You're the only one this has happened to. You're the only one going through this. You're the only one that's been left out. Anyone ever been there? It can be as easy as going to school and being picked on. It can be as easy as a comment made. I won't go into it in detail, but there was a time when I was about in fourth grade that someone made a comment of a name about me, and everyone that was in that room laughed that day. Now, to some, it didn't seem like anything, but to me, it was heart-ripping. And the funny thing about it is, <laughs> I'm in my 60s. It happened when I was in fourth grade. And this morning, when I begin to look at this and this memory just popped into my head, I felt this little twinge in my heart. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, eventually they realized it wasn't nice and apologized to me. But it hung on. And it's up to me what I do with it. It isn't me. It wasn't me. But sometimes if you're going through something and someone says something to you, it can certainly affect you, can it? I remember a teacher one time who called me up to the class. I did everything I could to please her, and nothing that I did did please her. Um, and she was talking about color coding, what you should wear with something, what you should pair with something, blah, blah, blah. So she called on me and I was wearing my favorite brown dress that day. I can see probably why she didn't like it because 
Every time it was clean in my closet, I wore it. I just like this brown dress, which is weird because I hate wearing brown today. But there, then I liked it. Possibility, I liked it because maybe Marie never wore it and it came in and it was the first time I wore it. I don't know. I always had to wear Marie's clothes, so my own clothes were really, really important. So if you have children and you keep passing down the clothes, please, from the heart of my heart, buy them their own dress once in a while. No. You following? Our minds will play tricks on us. But anyway, this teacher, Miss Pila was her name. It's funny how I don't remember any of the teachers' names I like, but I can remember Miss Pila. I prayed fervently. I even went to the altar and asked them to pray that I would not get her for a teacher because she was mean. She was across the hall from us. And lo and behold, I got in her class had me come up and stand in front of the room and said, I thought, Sister Marie, with all my heart, she was going to tell me that I looked good. But she didn't. She said, now, Eleanor has brown hair, and she has a brown dress on, and it doesn't match, and she should go home and take it off and never wear it again. Thank you, Adrian. I feel your love. She just looked at me and said, sorry. <laughs> well, I could stay there, but I have learned that what I like is what I like, and if you don't like it, I ain't going to give it to you to wear because I'm wearing it. You following me? I can't always tell you I look good, but I feel good, right? Things in life will try to bring you down, and I gave you some silly examples, are examples that begin to hinder us and cause us to like close ourselves up and not see the worth that God has put in us. And the worst of it is, is we'll never bring that worth Fourth, because we're so bound by people who made us have leprosy. This leprosy of words, of hurts, of struggles, uh, the worst struggles of all came to my life when death happened. Like, just turmoil and is it worth it and the whys and the how comes and all of these things and it just like blows your mind the worst comes when my husband and I get upset with each other and we just don't seem to know how to fix it and I have to drive out to my secret hiding place and boohoo and cry and sometimes get out and walk really fast and to, to get back in the car and drive home and say, I'm going to try to fix this. Of course, that's after, uh, that's after I stopped blaming him and saying it's his fault. I'm happy for all of you that have never had an argument with your spouse, never had a crossword, always lovey-dovey, hubby-bubby, okay? Well, Jerry and I are hubby-dubby, lovey-bubbies, but every once in a while... <laughs> that's the problem! It's not my fault, it's his! It's gotta be him! If we're not careful, we look at those things as failures instead of fixing them. My husband is right. I heard him telling someone the other day 
after 30 years of marriage, we're just like really getting it. Two strong-willed people who both want to talk at the same time. <laughs> I know you'd never believe that about me. <laughs> Who's to fault? An enemy that wants to try to make a wedge to destroy so that our prayers will be hindered. When you put it in the right perspectives, then it makes you not drive to your secret hiding place. Did you notice I didn't want to tell where it was? <laughs> you don't want to find me when I'm there. Sometimes I've had to go to that secret place when life itself just tried me. And on my way there, I was thrown in the towel. No, I'm not going to commit suicide. I've never got there yet. I'd have to hurt myself. <laughs> Just, I'm going to quit, God. Um, I'll move out of town so there's not a division. Go find myself another church. And then I start thinking about what, what church I might fit into. And then I'm like, oh, I really do love my church. I know I have this, these struggles right now, but this too will pass, right, God? And then I get in my car and I drive back and I show up on Sunday morning and preach my heart out. But if we're not careful, now I don't do that all the time, okay? And, you know, they, they tell you as a preacher that you shouldn't be honest with your church. Come on, guys. I'm as honest as they come. Okay, I'm not this glorified individual. Um, Selena, yeah, it was Selena who told me yesterday that, that at Sister Harris's funeral when I got up to minister the way the light was shining, it just like made this glow all around my head. And I was like, yes, I finally made it to angelicness. We're all human. We're all in this together. So many times you will say to me, Pastor, I couldn't have got through this without you. I want you to know something. I would not have been able to help you if I had not come through it to know how to tell you to get out of it. And my point of all of this fiasco is to tell you this. I have a choice. It can define me, or it can build me. I choose it to build me. I choose it to go on. I choose the truth of God's word over the defeat and the lies of the enemy, because he knows God's word too. This leper came into a disease that caused him to be defiled. If we're not careful, our personal hurts, personal surroundings, I'm, I'm just amazed with Cheryl Ewing. She's kind of like a hero to me. No, not kind of, she is. Raised in church, mother on fire for God, loved God, ended up meeting a friend, changed her whole life, turned her against her mother, against the church, got into gangs, drugs, her whole life turned to a leprosy. It defiled her. For God, by that same mother's prayers, <laughs> to turn around, get saved, get set free, <laughs> oh God, and not live in that past of should'ves, could'ves, didn'ts, okay? 
and moved on, ended up in our church because she wanted to grow. She wanted to do something for God. And God's not through with her. She's got a desire that I believe is going to come to pass for her. And I remember when her mama died, she goes, Pastor, can you believe that just a few years ago, I would have never been able to do this, but God saved me? Mama trusted me, let me take care of her, watch over her. <laughs> you listening to me? We have a choice what we're going to do with the defeats of life. We don't have to stay there, church. We don't have to walk in that church. We have a God that doesn't see the defeats, and he's up there rooting for us. Stop thinking that. Stop going that way. I've got a purpose for you. <laughs> if you'll just come back to me like Cheryl did, now she's a bus driver driving kids around, making them feel happy every morning they show up at her bus. Think about it. <laughs> Brother Yancey, God did the same thing for you. And whatever God's plan is for you, don't let the leprosy defile you of our mind, of a broken heart. He said, I'll be the mender of that broken heart. Don't let shame defeat you. Don't let it cut your arm off. Don't, don't let it cause you not to be hearing the love of a God who says, you can do all things through me that's going to strengthen you. Philippians 4.13, I can't tell you how many times I quote that scripture. Here I go, Lord. You said you'd strengthen me. I'm hanging on to you. This word defile also means this word sully. Damage the purity of or integrity of to defile. Ben and Nicole are about to bring two baby girls into this world, and when they hold them, they will be pure, full of integrity. You hearing me? I can look at Sister Shelley, who... If you ever have the opportunity to sit with her and listen to her testimony, it is unbelievable. The places of not knowing where she fit, where she belonged, the world making fun of her because it seemed like she didn't fit. And yet how many times just recently was able to go with her as she sang to this woman who knew she would never see us again, but with total peace, Sister Shelley helped her walk through heaven's door. What if she still hung on to? I don't know who I am. I don't know where I fit. She found her identity in Jesus Christ. And the talent that laid within her came alive. I don't know how many times I have listened to Sister Shelley sing. I, I remember in the midst of COVID when it just was really, really horrible and we were shut in and we didn't know when we were going to get out and it was just isolation 
and the music ministry put Shelly on to sing a song. I will never forget that morning as life just broke forth in me. Why? Because she didn't let the hurts of life taint her ministry, her gift, her calling, her talent. Someone just told me that she stood and began to speak to somebody in a hurtful place on Thursday night and just comforted them and showed them that God has already supplied little Shelly, little, little like little Shelly over there that, I mean, she's, she's not boisterous. She's, I don't, I, I've never heard her even yell. Like, how could she be a preacher? She don't yell. But in the quiet places of prayer, she's allowed God to use her life. Does she, could she give in to the hurts? Could she, get, yeah, because she got past what the past was, but the future has brought blows too, but she refuses to let leprosy cause her to stand on the outskirts and scream, unclean, unclean. I want to tell someone this morning that the hurts that you may have, the things that may come your way, that's why I told you this morning in this worship to look at what he's doing, not at the ugliness of a situation. I believe that God gave me this illustration because I and many lived a week of hell just a little bit ago. I mean, it was like, um, and in fact, someone, someone was meaning to be very kind, but they put me on a group chat, and my phone started going boop, 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 and I literally was like, oh, God, oh, God, what, what is it now? Because every time I picked up the phone, it was something. Tried to go do my grocery shopping, and I'm in Big Wise parking lot for like an hour and a half trying to help figure out what an enemy tried to come in and destroy, and God brought the victory regardless. So I sent a message and said, Please get me off this thing. You guys are going to give me a heart attack. Life happens doesn't it? And please, I beg of you, church, I beg of you, please don't not call me when you need me thinking I'm too busy for you. You are my job. I'm your pastor. Don't don't, don't let me find you in a struggle, in a need, and then tell me, well, Pastor, we didn't want to bother you. You just bothered me. I just feel inadequate because I wasn't in a place to know at the moment that you needed me. Just, just send it through. I don't, I don't need all the details if I need them. My staff knows I will call and ask. Just don't go through things alone. Okay? I don't mind, and I really don't. I don't mind being woke up in the middle of the night when you have a need. That's not exhausting to me, but wondering is. <laughs> Just threw that in. So this word defiled means it's going to damage the purity that God has made us to be. Pastor, I can never be pure. Get rid of the leprosy. Pastor, I, I never can be perfect. Get rid of the leprosy. Stop 
looking up at heaven saying, I'm un I'm unclean, God. <laughs> you can't use me, God, because I'm unclean. This leper knew he was unclean, but he came to Jesus and said, Will you heal me? And Jesus simply said, I will. I will. How many of us have not done the will of God? How many of us have stepped aside? How many of us have left it to somebody else when God is telling us, this is your calling? This is who I made you to be, and you keep giving it to somebody else. I believe, as I studied this last night, that I could hear God actually crying out to the church world, will you remove the divide and do what I've called you to do in this last day? I believe I heard him crying out, saying, stop defeating the thing that I made. I want to tell you today, you do not have to have leprosy. <laughs> I'll say it again. You do not have to have leprosy. God will grow back your fingers. There's another story of one leper who came back and Jesus said, I won't just heal you, but I'll completely heal you. And the fingers that were missing grew back. The skin that had turned white turned pink again. I want you to know something. Or maybe it was a, a leper whose skin turned black again. I don't know. I don't care. All I know is skin came back. Because he's not a respecter of persons. He loves all of us equally the same. Society has tried to come in and put spiritual leprosy on us. It tells us what we can say, what we can't say, what we can do, what... And then the so-called church world has come and put a spiritual leprosy on us. You don't have to listen to this word, except we all want to listen to this word when we want a miracle, when we want healing. But the thing that moves the hand of God is faith, but faith will not work if I don't have any holiness, righteousness, love for my brother, that's a big one. Sometimes, I'll be honest, I'm like, God, why do you have to put that one in there? Sometimes I have to seriously go read that and go, okay, God, I won't do it. Life isn't fair, but God is. And he will not take away what he put within you, no matter what has occurred in your life. It also means this word defile to mar, to impair the appearance of, to disfigure, impair the quality of, Impair means it weakens us, it damages us. The dictionary said especially a human faculty or function. I want to ask you today, how many of you have let your past, 
your future hurts from your past, your move on with God, I would do this but so and so. I would do this but so and so. So and so is not God. I've told you many times, if I listened to the so and so's, I would certainly not be fulfilling the will of God. I wouldn't even be saved. The songwriter said from the word of God, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. We have to be careful because many times our families can be the worst causes of our defiles. Jesus even told us you wouldn't be accepted by your families, by your close acquaintances. How many knows that if somebody you don't know does something to you, it's a whole lot easier to get over than it is the people you love? We must know what this enemy is, and we must know how he attacks us. Then it all goes on down, and it says it spoils to diminish or destroy the value or quality of. Church, as your pastor, as I see you come to places where you're allowing the enemy to diminish and destroy your value and your quality by always having to encourage you to do the will of God, it hurts. You are of most value. You are of most value. There's a lady that's watching this morning. She couldn't be in church. She got saved not too long ago. I look forward to finding letters from her in my mail. She's like my cheerleader. She wrote me a note at Christmas and said to me, Pastor, my Christmas present to you is a short card. And I went, oh, because I was looking for the book. She shares what God has done for her. She shares the people she's prayed for that God sets free. She, she's just an encourager. She just has so many wonderful things happening in her life, and she makes me excited to read what God is doing for her. Just amazing things it's her it's her gift it's it's what god gave her to do she wrote to me one day and said pastor i believe that i'm your encourager and so do i <laughs> it's it's awesome it's it's awesome to have someone send you a scripture many of you are doing that it's awesome it's awesome to hear what God's doing in your life. And I'm seeing a turn, but I'm also seeing some that when God calls them to do things, they respond with, oh, not me. They get all fluttered. Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Now, cleaning ministry is a wonderful ministry, and anyone can do the cleaning ministry. So I'm being careful how I say this, but some of us have resorted to, I'm a cleaner in the house of God, and that's my calling. Is it? 
Is it your only calling? I'm the pastor. I've been through every ministry of this church. I've done it, been there, worked in it, okay? But if I go in that back bathroom and there is a cleaner and that toilet's dirty, I'm going to wash it. If there isn't enough cleaners show up, it's not above me to grab a rag. I want you to know we have to get out of our settled places where we feel like we're okay, but if God wants anything more of us, we begin to scream, unclean. Now, can you ever get away from the cleaning ministry? No, you can't. <laughs> Just because you become the big guy on the block doesn't mean you couldn't also sign up once in a while to seat the church. <gasps> oh, my, my holiness will leave me. No, it'll keep you holy. It'll keep you out of the realm of pride. Now, there are times you will enter into certain things and you have to take a part away. Like, let's look at Ben Westry. Ben Westry, I think you need to join the seating ministry. Well, there's a little conflict there. Seeing while you're seating, he's up here getting the sound ready. So that would not be something good. However, now that I think of it, Ben works over there with the men's where he doesn't have to do this and make sure people get seated. He's at the door letting people in sometimes. You following me? Sometimes I like to go back to my first fruits so that I can understand people. One of my greatest joys through COVID was being at the back of that church, making sure everyone that walked in was doing good. It's not below me. It's tiring, but it's not below me. It's hard to wear these heels standing back there while you all enter in an hour and then come up here and stand for however long I preach. This little toe over here on the side starts saying, hey man, can't you sit down for a while? Are you following me this morning? I'm not here to rebuke you. I'm here to get you where God wants you to be. We have to stop limiting ourselves. We have to stop letting other people limit us because we feel like we failed. It spreads. It opens out and extends over a large or increasing area. The amazing thing about this is it will affect every aspect of our lives. We won't feel like we deserve to move up the ladder Everybody else should get it, but we're destined to be down here on the bottom of the pay scale. It hinders us believing that God can advance us. We're always cowering away. You see, when we allow our lives to be filled with leprosy <laughs> and what it means, we begin to stand away and the distance gets farther and farther and farther away of God ever thinking we were worthy enough to be called. 
we begin to doubt our salvation, we begin to doubt our walk with God. We're always walking in fear that I'm not going to please God. I'm not going to love God enough. God's not going to love me. Oh my goodness, I made a mistake. I don't know. And we spend our lives constantly trying to get forgiven when he already forgave. One of the hardest things is to talk to people and all they can remember is a past. Your past should make you stronger, not continue to make you weaker. It destroys. It puts an end to the existence by damaging it or attacking it. It ruins it emotionally or spiritually. It will defeat someone utterly, completely. It will destroy you. So this morning, I just want to ask you, is it worth hanging on to the things that makes you yell unclean when God has a full future for you. I want you to turn this morning to Psalm 139, verses 1 through 24. Many of you know this, and we're not going to read this scripture this morning in sadness. We're going to read this this morning in gladness. Are you ready? O oh Lord, thou hast searched me. O oh Lord, thou hast known me. You don't have to hide behind any of those things anymore. He already knows. He already searched you. And he already loved what he found. <laughs> Say it again, Sister Cheryl. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. <laughs> Even in my secret hiding place, afar off from Manchester. <laughs> Thou compassest my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all of my ways. Every single one of them. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. That's a little scary, isn't it? <laughs> but he knows it. The Bible says that out of the abundance of our heart, this tongue will speak. So if your heart is constantly looking to the brokenness, looking to the hurts, the mouth is going to speak that. And God is up there rooting with his angels saying, let me heal you, let me take this, because I got a future for you. If you'll just stop looking at this and look at what I'm doing, you will be as successful as Sister Agnes. And Sister Shelley. And all the other people that you don't think you'll ever be able to come up to. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Think about it. God Almighty comes and puts his hand on you. Woo! He's better than any movie star. Any famous person you could run into at the airport? 
True? <laughs> when I go through Florida, I'm always looking for the little people. Because I watched one time and they were in the airport and everybody's seen them. So now when I'm in Florida in the airport, I'm like, are they flying today? Are they there? I want to see their little kids. It, it'd be wonderful to come home and say, guess who I see? But you know what? I have almighty God, Sister Shelley, that says he puts his hand on me. This morning, as we begin to worship, he walked through putting his hand of approval on us. Oh, baby, <laughs> how amazing is that? <laughs> Shoo, got to read that one again. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from my, thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? So even when I'm happy and excited and everything's going great, it's wonderful to know he's there, but when everything is falling apart and you don't know what to do, and you're in a turmoil, he's still there, church. He's still there to carry you through. He's still there to direct you. You just got to know he's got his hand on you, and he knows what your tongue is saying, and he knows you're hurting, and he's going to come through, and he's going to bring you to victory regardless. I'm not preaching this message from something that happened years ago in my life. It just took place. It just happened. What does leprosy do? It said it spreads. So if I become defeated, then I defeat the others who need me to bring them the victory. That's one reason why the enemy tries to come against us and make us think we have something that we don't have. But when we go to God and say, will you heal me? He says, I will. I will. But pe no, there's no buts. This guy had leprosy. It was uncurable. <laughs> but Jesus said, I will. All you got to do is muster up that little tiny faith he put inside of you and say, will you? And he will say, I will. <laughs> this man, I like him. He was straightforward. He didn't come to Jesus and say, well, you know, I, I grew up and, and I was a healthy little guy and I did everything right. My mama loved me and and I got married, and I had this beautiful family, and then one day I came in contact with this guy who should have wore a mask and stayed home, and he didn't follow the signs of his symptoms, and he walked up to me, and I got leprosy, and, and I had to leave everybody, and, and I'm angry, and I'm out there all by myself, and I stand over there in the corner of the trees, and I'm watching my children grow up, and they're getting all grown up, and I can't even talk to them. I, I can't let them see me, and, and my mother, she just died, and, and I couldn't even go to her funeral. He didn't do anything of that. He just walked up in faith and said, if you'll heal me, I know you will. Well, I guess he didn't like my illustration. I said, he just walked up to Jesus and said, if you'll heal me, I know you will. And Jesus said, yes, I will. Consider yourself whole. It don't matter how you got it, where you got it. All that matters is you go to Jesus and say, I know you can do it if you will. Look at your neighbor and say, I will. 
Jesus said, I will. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Why well, get burnt all the time? <laughs> Just get up into the heavenly places. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. All of these things come from turmoils of life. You ever been in a place where it just seemed like the darkness just covered over you? Oh, but then his light shined and showed you your path. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. He doesn't hold you accountable for the dark places of your life. He still sees your worth. There's a new thing going around. I read it so often lately. I'm in a dark place. Then move up where the light is. Open up your blinds. My husband and I, we read where your best sleep comes from a darkened room. So we have these lights that if something walks in front of them, they come on and it makes our bedroom just alive with light and many times would wake us up. So we went out and got these darkening shades. So we close the blinds, and then we pull these darkening curtains over, and the room becomes black, except for that little tiny, tiny, minute light in the fire thing up there on the ceiling. <laughs> it's light to the bathroom. It's, you following me? It may be dark in your life, but look up, there's, there's a warning. It's Jesus Christ saying, I'm going to bring you through. My light is still here. Well, the great thing about these darkening shades is they keep the light out. The bad thing about them is when the sun comes up and you should be getting up, you open your eyes and you think it's still night and you want to go back to bed. Open up your darkening blinds because there's a light out there that's going to lead you. When I got up this morning and pulled the first one back, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, the sun is shining. Faith says, I will not live in this darkness. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I couldn't help but Sister Nicole, with two little girls in her womb, thinking last night, God has already covered them. He's already got a plan for them. He's already got a destiny for them. When I think about Sister Nicole and her testimony that she gave and the struggles she had as a young girl and one day making a covenant with God, life may be dark all around me. I may have not the best situations in life, but God, I pray 
you will never let me leave the house of God. And all of the turmoil and all the trials, it's easy for us that have this leprosy working on us to look at her and say, oh, I wish I was her. Oh, she's got it so together. I wish I had what she had. No, because she struggled too. The difference is she chose the light instead of her surroundings. Powerful, isn't it? It's all kinds of testimonies in this church. For thou hast possessed my reins. When I looked at this and brought it up, it says, This is the keys to a godly life. For thou hast possessed my reins. I'm here to tell somebody today, you need to take the reins out of the devil's hands, kick him off of your back, and say, Jesus, hop on. To possess means have as belonging to one. I do not want to belong to my hurts anymore. I don't want to belong to my disappointments anymore. I don't want to be hindered from doing what God has called me to do because I'm afraid of what someone else is going to do. I choose to let Jesus be the controller of my reins. If he's not the controller, who do you think is? It's not you. You cannot get on your back and steer. It says of a demon or spirit, especially an evil one, have complete power over someone like the leper and be manifested through their speech, through their actions, Unclean, unclean, the leper cried until Jesus stopped by. What is the thing that is reigning you today? <laughs> it's amazing that this thing is influenced or controlled by something. Today I choose Jesus. Now listen to this about this word reins, R-E-I-N-S. A long, narrow strap attached at one end to a horse's bit. It goes in his mouth. Did you ever see it? It's typically used in pairs to guide or check a horse while riding or driving. The verb means check or guide a horse by pulling on its reins. This morning, when I read this definition last night, I could like see God on my back saying, shut your mouth and stay straight. <laughs> he says, my road is straight. It's not crooked. All you got to do is follow me. It's narrow. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the light. Just stay focused on me. And he's going to drive me where I need to go. It's when we get sidetracked with, oh my goodness, listen to those words. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh my goodness, look at my record. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And Jesus Christ said, I'll get on your back and I will guide you. And where does he guide us? Here. It's really hard to talk when he's got the rain in your mouth. True? 
It's hard to light, too. It's hard to even know who knows the laws. Go ahead, I dare you to try that. It's very, very, very wide. Go ahead, try it. Adrian is doing an Annabelle moment. I cannot believe you're embarrassing me like this, Tessa. <laughs> Welcome to the club. I want to be steadfast, unmovable. I want to be a vehicle for God to use. But when my mouth constantly defeats me, how can I be that? You following me? He said, I want to possess your reins. How amazing is that? For thou hast possessed my reins. When he died on the cross and he, and he made that covenant with us and his blood flowed so that the grace of God could change our lives, he said, I'm going to possess your reins. It's time we let that cross do its job in our life. It's time we stop thinking we cannot do anything because we keep looking into a pit of despair. I'm not there, church, are you? Look at your neighbor and say, where are you? Are you in the pit or are you out of it? I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Do you know it today? Hmm. <laughs> My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Jesus, his substance in two little girls about to be born into this world is not hidden from him. They may be down here on this earth and not in heavenly places, but he said, I got a call, and I got news for you. When you were in your mother's womb, he put a call on your life. And it's your choice whether you use it for God or you invest it in this world, but what you invest here will not be an investment in heaven. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I want you to know something this morning, church. Please, I beg of you to hear me this morning. Hear this word of God this morning. Please, I beg of you. It's in you. It abides in you. God wants to bring it out of you. If you'll just begin to use it, maybe you will make a mistake. Maybe you will falter. But there'll be a church that will be there to lift you up, to hold on to you. And you will be coming forth, just like Sister Agnes. When she started out, she, she started out. And sometimes she needed encouragement. We gave it to her. My God, what God is doing with her life today is absolutely amazing. You can look at little Alexis Levine, who was just this shy little girl, scared of just about everything. And a church body got around her begin to help her, begin to move on her. I was, I was so excited when these wonderful ladies of Zion that she could easily say, oh my goodness, they're, they're more perfect for this job. They made her the leader of their whole entire prayer group. I noticed that without even knowing it. I started to see this growth come out of her. That's our job as women of Zion. And then I noticed that when we asked during the fast for one of our new Christians who got saved who wasn't in a prayer group and wasn't even sure how to manage everything, and so we made this announcement. If, if you're the leader of a prayer group, would, would you mind getting with her and seeing if your prayer work time works for her and just 
help guide her through this process of 21 days. And at the end of the night, I looked, and there was Alexis over there. That's what happens when it spreads. <laughs> I asked that lady, how did you make out? She goes, excellent. It's what it is to build up and to have someone to help strengthen you to get to the place you need to be. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they're more in number than the sand. And when I awake, <laughs> I am still with thee. Surely thou will slay the wicked, O oh God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. Oh my goodness, it took verse 1 all the way to verse 18 for them to get their power to tell those bloody men to take a hike. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I think it's safe to say that God continued to do a work in this psalmist's life. Because you may be grieved, and you must hate the right enemy, but you cannot hate the person. God loves all, even those that rub us the wrong way. This morning, I want you to dig out your Bibles, and I want you to search to find me a scripture and stand and read it really, really loud that tells me that God knows you, loves you, and finds you worthy of your calling. Go. Dig it out. You at home, grab your Bibles. When you find it, stand up. Give me the scripture reference so I can give it to them at home and yell. Let's yell it out this morning. Yep, I'll let you use Google if you have to. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You stole that from the funeral. <laughs> but it was a good one, wasn't it? Who's next? Go ahead. Ye have not chosen me. Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. And ordained you. That ye, go and bring forth fruit. that you'll go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should be named, and, that your fruit should be named. and whatsoever ye shall ask, whatsoever ye shall ask of, the Father, of the Father, in my name, he what? He may give it you. Where? What chapter? John 15, 16, you at home. Next. Wait a minute. I think there's someone in the balcony. Stand up. Praise him, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye earth. For he loves us with unfailing love. The faithfulness of the Lord endureth for just a moment. How long does it endure? Forever. 
Where was that? Psalm 117. Who, uh... Oh, we will not fight with Sister Evelyn. She'll go before you, Ronke. Go ahead, Sister Evelyn. <laughs> Jeremiah 33.3. 33, Call on me. And I will answer. And show thee great things that thou knowest not. Ronke. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall, let's all say this one together. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Uh, say that one again. both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So no place you walk is left out. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Reverend Kalinsky. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. Ben and Nikki, he knows those babies. <laughs> and before thou camest forth, and before thou camest forth out, of out of the womb, I sanctified, I sanctified you. And ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak. Behold, I, God, I can't speak. I'm just a child. But the Lord said unto me, Ain't getting out of it that easy. Say not. Look at your neighbor. Say not, I'm a child. Oh, a ta da ba 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 ma ma sa ka ya. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee, to deliver, thee saith the Lord. to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand, put his hand, put his hand and, touched my mouth. and oh, he put the bit in there. I won't do it again, Dylan. I won't talk like that. <laughs> And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I've put them there. Mia. Psalms 18, 32 and 33. It is what? Oh, it's God that girdeth thee with strength, not all of your friends in your corner. And maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. Now, I know that there's some more standing, but this is your homework. I want you every day this week to post, if you don't post, I want you to call five people every single day and give them a vote of confidence scripture. If they start 
to tell you their difficulties, their weakness, say, excuse me, I'd like to repeat this scripture to you again. Have a great day, love you, hang on to the word and hang up. We have to break habits of us defeating ourselves before we ever get to where we need to go. We have to stop letting voices from the past weaken our ability to move forward in God. You just heard it in the scriptures of God's word. Did you not? Stand to your feet this morning. Oh, pastor, how are you going to give an altar call over this? I'll tell you how. I'm going to throw out some reins. Raise your hands to heaven. You at home, raise your hands to heaven. Say, God, I give you my reins. In our worship this morning, we sang, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Why don't you singers get up here and we're just going to begin to sing those words over to God. Come on, run. Come on. I don't want this presence to leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. Take my reins. Take my reins. This morning, when you start to feel him taking your reins, just get out of your seat and begin to walk and say, drive me, God. Walk with me, God. Lead me, God. Come on, let's get some fanaticism here today. Help me to break out of my seat. Help me to break out of my place. Help me, oh God, to stop looking for excuses. Take my reins. I accept your direction. Go ahead, start singing it. Just that part. control me no more. Become a pillar in God's house. What more does he have for you? Hallelujah. Reach out to our sister and claim healing for her. Those that are homesick this morning, claim healing for them.
Let's just keep praying as God is still ministering to hearts. You're looking very nice today, Artie. Yeah. 